Today we are here at Art Consultancy Hubbard's limited exhibition space in London Baker Street and this is a little guided tour uh, through everything that I've decided to take to London with me. Uh, we have uh, most artists that have been shown uh, in Graz already uh, in the exhibition Paintings Painted. Again, in the corner, we can see um, Des is Kapfeifelnet uh, in the French version. Ceci n'est pas une pipe. And it's placed on the ground uh, in the corner, so you can see it straight away when you come inside. And this was the centerpiece or one of the main pieces um, sh shown at the Bell Tower in Graz. And now we have it here in London right at the corner and here we can see the title again this is Kapfeifelnet which is the Styrian version of uh, referencing René Magritte's work Ceci ne pas une pipe uh, in this case a little whistle instead of the grandfather's pipe and um, it made its way to London like all the other works or selected works here we have an artist who's uh, with us new, it's Katrin Weber. Uh, her work uh, is very delicate and she's using gold leaves and splashes paint on the canvas, uh, using brushes to distribute it. Uh, but first it's like a lot of color on the canvas. In this case, it works on paper uh, that are as well framed. And on this side, um, there is larger works uh, that she's made. And she's been invited by myself because I found her profile on Instagram. So I'm often asked how I get to the artists that I exhibited in the end. Um, it's uh, just uh, luck that I find them. And, uh, then I'm gonna, and then I'm asking them, to contribute uh, works for the exhibition. And in this case, uh, Catherine sent several works and uh, they're also very well received with the public that comes to the gallery space or art space, I would say. It's uh, not really for profit, uh, like in Austria as well, a non-for-profit space. But obviously, if we can uh, support artists uh, with uh, helping them to sell, which is my main um, work now as a wealth advisor for artist investment. Um, we support artists, especially from Graz and Styria, but now I've also decided to go a little bit more international and include some counterparts worldwide which is uh, part of my series Yaka Young Austrian Contemporary Art and Counterparts Worldwide uh, since several years. The series started in 2008 and ever since it's growing and we have new artists involved and here it's a work by René Berghold. He's, uh, this work is called Erased and he's used um, erasers that he uh, used uh, that long that the remains um, were left and the razor was erased and that's also the title of the work, Erased. You can see it um, that uh, it's very grainy and all the parts are adhered with special glue to the canvas and uh, this work is in my collection. He's made it especially for the work uh, presentation, paintings painted at the Bell Tower in Graz. And um, it's made its way in the Aoha art collection by myself. We have here work by Martin Brischnick, who's also working as an architect and has uh, had art as part of his studies at the Technical University in Graz, at the Institute of Contemporary Art that they've got there. And uh, he's um, 
in his approach to art, very emotional. Um, he's painting out of his personal uh, emotions that uh, can be hard times that he goes through or also happy times that happen to him and uh, it's expressed uh, in this case in a dragon um, that's chasing him or uh, he's chasing the dragon you never know and uh, so he does uh, use quite strong oil paint and it has different layers and as he told me he as well uh, paints a lot during the night uh, when he might not be able to sleep at times and so all the emotions that go through his head his dreams and encounters of things difficulties in life but as well as i said uh, happy times uh, transformed into this uh, canvas paintings he does over here we have Rainer Heidon, a German painter. Um, he's uh, painting wood ghosts, as he calls them. Um, they breathe in pollen, uh, which uh, mark these little dots around them. And they have an approach uh, with reference to manga, but also Amazons. You can see the work. Uh, the figurines have uh, stripes over their eyes, which is um, known that Amazons have. And uh, his work is uh, especially um, in, uh, interesting to children. I had that in my work with children um, who drew a lot uh, about his wood ghosts in the workshops I did uh, in the framework of Art, art Arc uh, Bridging by Art, which means um, we bridge uh, differences between older people. I've worked with, with um, senior citizens as well, and the bridging should be both sided so the young can learn from the more established people or older generation and uh, the older generation can learn to look with a fresh eye again which is quite important in my approach to art I always try to look like a child when I go uh, to an exhibition no matter how it's reviewed I get my own opinion that's as well why I do not like to read what others write. Here we have, like I also already described in Graz, René Berghold, another work by his, where you can see uh, black and white scribblings. And uh, if you look carefully enough, or if you were told what it is, it's swastikas. And he would like to point out, or oh, this is what I saw in it, that um, we have a lot of racism, that it's below the surface. So for example, you go to a pub and you talk to your mates or friends and someone is making a nasty comment about someone from a foreign country. Uh, might it be with uh, regards to his background or his, uh, uh, yeah, also his tone of skin. We had that in the past now, most recently with the Black Lives Matter movement. And this is my approach and answer to this movement. I thought about it for a while. What can I do uh, to participate? I didn't want to do what everyone else did. And at the Formula One, they said, everyone should do um, what is in their own mind, what they can uh, think of. So I thought I involved this work, even though very controversial, to uh, make a statement against racism, against uh, racism that is below the surface, uh, and to make a statement, where are we today? Do we help those in need? In my opinion, a very uh, both-sided approach, because if we think in a very extreme manner, about the Ku Klux Klan, 
we know latest uh, through the movie by Spike Lee um, that there is the other side to it, which is uh, the Black Panther movement. Um, it's the Ku Klux Klan uh, for uh, people with dark colored skin or from foreign countries, depending on which country you are, obviously, when we're in Africa, we are the foreigners. Um, but uh, this is a very similar movement to the one uh, known as Ku Klux Klan. Um, white people are in the focus uh, of uh, dark colored people. And so I say the approach has also always to be both sided. Now the very terrible incident that someone has been killed by a policeman is in the news and in our heads. And it's good that we address the topic on a day-to-day -day basis, but as well, um, everyone else, or I say everyone else, but I have to speak from my perspective as a white Caucasian person. Uh, I also call um, upon people from different backgrounds, different ethnicity, et ethnic backgrounds, that's what I'm trying to say, um, that no one should uh, exclude people who are different to ourselves. I talked to the kids as well in my uh, workshop last time that is also in a little different manner if we um, do bullying at school or if it's done, we should take a stand and we should say, no, that's not right. And support those who are most uh, vulnerable in society and take a stand against racism, no matter which direction it's coming from. So this is my statement uh, about René Berkholdt's work um, and um, um, I've been going on long about it, so let's just look at other works as well. We have here Susanne Volte again. She's as well been in uh, the exhibition in Graz. Uh, she has a very recent approach to painting and as well paints uh, from an emotional side. And uh, I've chosen these works because they seem very graphic to me. And this one has never been exhibited before. It's been done especially for this exhibition. Or let's say it's an extension of the two other works that have been shown at the, the Schlossberg, at the Bell Tower. And uh, I'm very glad that I could involve her um, because she's a fine painter and uh, has developed her language of painting most recently. And I think it's worth uh, to look into her work and see as well how she develops and does work in the future. She's from Styria as well, like most art artists in this exhibition, or artists that are not from Styria have a base as well um, some reference to Styria, like Max Kulich. He's a painter from um, Vienna, or his studio is near Vienna now, but he studied uh, industrial design in Graz. You can also see it um, in his graphic approach, uh, which is quite uh, design uh, typographical, if you think about typ typography. And uh, also, I think it's about the development of a work. You can nearly see, for example, that some, which I see in it, uh, when a, an industrial object is created, it looks a little bit uh, like it's um, like something flew or was drawn across or dragged across the canvas. And he is involving a very strong, um, how would you call it? Um, it's a strong movement that he has to endure or go through where he places the canvas on the ground and then with a strong uh, strength and movement of a certain device he built, 
he drags it towards him and these different layers are created uh, by beforehand like Catherine splashing paint on top but he does not do it with a brush but he has a certain device that he's built which we keep secret because every work should also have his mystery and we're not giving, giving away uh, what he did. Here we have a little work by Tonino Cottarelli. Uh, he's an artist from Imola. I spoke a lot about him as well. And he's the only artist uh, that is already deceased. Uh, we have shown his work at the, um, at the bell tower as well. Now here was another work by uh, Susanne Volte. And here we have his works um, that I've chosen especially for the exhibition. And I'm working together with the Fondazione Tonino Gottarelli because um, his works are um, represented there in the collection or the foundation that they built for his work. Um, he's uh, most of the time he remained in Imola, which is a region or a city near Bologna. And in his work, uh, it's expressed uh, 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 what he's uh, seen around his city and the countryside surrounding it. So he always uses special te techniques as well. Uh, if you heard my other guided tour, you might already know it, but I explain it quickly for those who haven't seen it so far. Uh, he uses different materials and creates layers. So everything is uh, created layer by layer on top of each other and uh, as well um, gouaches and drawings, aquarelle paintings and different layers of fine paper that he uses. When we talk about fine paper, I would like to show the last artist. Here is another Tonino Cottarelli work. That's my favorite work and soon in my collection as well. And you can see he does a lot with poetry as well, drawings, and the layers are clearly visible. Then the last artist I would like to talk about is um, Elisabeth Pfnies. Her works uh, are also uh, put uh, or drawn on special paper that she's uh, importing from Japan or uh, buying uh, from special shops in Japan or those who sell Japanese paper and we have here some of her cards that are outside of the frame clearly visible when the sun is shining from the back window you can even see the light coming through, which makes them very shiny and uh, a little ephemeral, you could say, which I like especially about the work, even though the framed version is uh, well chosen as well by herself. And uh, in front, we have a jewelry designer uh, named Barbara Edlinger. She has her own studio in Graz and uh, she made these wonderful rings and earrings and the interesting thing about them is uh, that some are made of gold that has been collected in the river moor for those who do not know it it's uh, the main river that uh, divides Graz into two sides and um, these are uh, gold parts that have been collected in the river and uh, she's made these earrings out of them where she uh, makes a very fine and thin leaf out of it and um, those are earrings created with gold 
that's found in the river. So it's very special. And this is also one of her trademarks. Yeah, and this is the end of the tour, a little bit um, from the outside. I don't know if we can see it now as it's already dark. We mainly see the paintings in the back, but I'm definitely uh, sending you more photographs and um, you can see everything else in the future. I hope you had a good time and listened to my uh, little guided tour through the art space I created here in London in Baker Street, which is a quite prominent address. And I can also announce that this exhibition will travel to Rotterdam, to Victory Art, the cooperation partner of mine, and in the next year to Budapest, to Labor Collective, who are as well a cooperation partner of mine. And uh, the last step we're taking next year as I have this office membership now, we're going to New York, which is pretty exciting. We're going to be there uh, in May 2021. And therefore, what I always wanted to do uh, to present art from Graz, my home city, um, with the region Styria uh, abroad. And that way we're going um, not only European ways, but we always, or oh, from now on, go very international routes. Yeah, all right. This is uh, the last uh, sentence I'm going to be speaking. And I'm ending with the wood ghosts together with the eraser. And uh, I look forward to your feedback and maybe participation is always on you can write to me under the hubbards at artconsultancyhubbards.org or give me a call the numbers are on my website which is www.artconsultancyhubbards.org uh, i look forward to your submissions and wish you all the best in the meantime from london hello and at this this stage now as well goodbye <laughs> All my best, Daniela.